Hulk and the Agents of Smash came out alongside two other successful Marvel animated shows in 2012, and despite being a fairly comic accurate portrayal of Hulk, it was nowhere near as successful. It still had good aspects and episodes were worth watching, but it was not as strong as it could have been. I'm the strongest one there is! But don't worry, we'll get into detail of it soon. Before we get into it, let's get the basics out of the way. The story is told from the perspective of an online reality show created by Rick Jones to foster public acceptance of the Hulk as a hero, not a monster. The show is filmed by robotic flying cameras that accompany the agents of the Supreme Military Agency of Superhumans everywhere they go, capturing funny moments and cool action scenes throughout each episode. The show follows Hulk, She-Hulk, Red Hulk, A-Bomb, and Scar as they unite in the form of Agents of Smash. They're based near Vista Verde, where Hulk originated serves as their headquarters. Hulk, why should you spend your whole life hiding in the cellar of this old military base? They frequently encounter various threats, with their primary nemesis being the leader, whose actions tie into Scar's origin story. Ouch. With that said, let's get right into it. Time to smash. In the beginning, we see an old footage of the Hulk going on a rampage against the military forces, led by General Thunderbolt Ross. The footage is stopped, and Rick begins narrating about how Hulk used to be. He continues by adding that he'll use the cameras from the project to show a side that the military never showed. He heads down the mountain to where Hulk is lifting weights and reveals the news to Hulk, which he dislikes. Well, the mindless green Goliath known as the Hulk is even worse. Before the matter can be properly discussed, an alarm goes off and alerts the Dew of trouble. Telling Rick to stay put, Hulk heads off to save the Earth. Trouble in town. It turns out that a gamma portal had opened over Vista Verde. It causes a freak windstorm that almost snatches up a little girl until Hulk stops her. The army arrives and threatens to shoot the Hulk if he hurts the girl. Rick, disobeying Hulk's orders and following his friend to the town, comes between the two forces. Get her to safety, now. He tries to get the army to stand down afterwards. Hulk hands over the girl and instructs the army to take her somewhere self. The whole town by this point seems to have evacuated to safety, but Rick and Hulk are left alone. Moreover, the Hulk reveals that the portal leads to the negative zone. Rick then runs to safety and Hulk sends an energy force at the portal, intending to smash it close, but hit rebounds. Hulk is carrying Rick across the landscape and a cute away of the Hulk talking to the camera informs us of the events of the last episode. Annie Hylas watches the Hulk get his friend to safety, while adding that the barrier between dimensions is crumbling. Rick's eyes glow green and he wrenches out of Hulk's grasp in mid-jump, landing on and destroying a step. Hulk quickly works to dig his friend out from under the rubble, and a blue monstrosity emerges. Meanwhile, Rick realizes that he's become a blue Hulk. Shortly afterwards, the apparently castrated Rick expresses excitement about his new Hulk body, and starts jumping around in his excitement. He gives himself the new nickname of A-Bomb, which makes no sense if he's a Hulk, and not the newest version of the Abomination, a character who will go unmentioned despite being one of the Hulk's greatest enemies. Another portal opens, and Hulk still insists that Rick can't come with him. On the other hand, Annie Hillis uses a mind control device on Red Hulk and sends him and Scar to attack the ship Hulk, she Hulk, a bomb used to enter the negative zone. It'd be a bigger help if you'd stay out of my way. He and Red Hulk suspect someone from Earth supplied Annie Hillis with the devices. While the others fight Annie Hillis minions, Hulk confronts Annie Hillis, who crashes Hulk's minijet. Hulk then fights Annie Hillis and grabs his cosmic control rod, causing it to break and make him powerless. Annie Hylas claims his mob will still wipe out Earth, but Hulk bends the cosmic control rod in two. In the end, when Hulk rescues Scar, he discovers that Scar is involved with someone else besides Annie Hylas. Blaster causes trouble in the tunnels and fights the agents of Smash. Iron Man arrives to assist and together with Hulk and She-Hulk, they defeat Blaster. After the battle, Blaster manages to escape back to the negative zone. Later, the team travels to Stark Industries, where they encounter Hulkbuster armor designed specifically to confront the agents of Smash, if they ever become uncontrollable. The leader hijacks the Hulkbusters to attack the agents of Smash, but Iron Man comes to their aid and helps fight the Hulkbusters. He uses his holograms to fool the Hulkbusters into thinking that they destroyed them. Iron Man showed the agents of Smash footage of the stealth bot infecting a virus into the Hulkbuster armor, enabling this time, a hologram won't stop them. enabling them to be controlled externally. Using parts salvaged from the defeated Hulkbusters, the agents of Smash repropose them to confront the remaining Hulkbusters. The Hulkbusters then activate magnetizing beams to combine all of them into one giant Hulkbuster, 
which captures Iron Man and flies off. The agents of Smash pursue the giant Hulkbuster, where Iron Man states that his arc reactor is being used to power the giant Hulkbuster and use it as a bomb. Moreover, he says that he and the agents of Smash would be blamed for the city's destruction. Luckily, after freeing Iron Man, the Hulk redirects the defeated Hulkbuster into the river. Iron Man states that he will dismantle the Hulkbusters, but Hulk uses Big Brain Moment and insists that he keep one Hulkbuster in case he gets out of control. Hulk and the agents of Smash still in New York attend a card game at the Baxter Building held by The Thing. The Hulk also invites Spider-Man to help improve his image on Rick's web show, due to J. Jonah Jameson considering him a menace. The Collector arrives on Earth where he starts collecting Earth's heroes, consisting of the Avengers, a Fantastic Four, Howard the Duck, Wolverine, and the Agents of Smash. This continues until Hulk and Spider-Man are left. They trace the probes responsible for the abductions to an orbiting spaceship, where they find the superheroes in stasis bubbles. Collector arrives and introduces himself to them, where he states that he has been researching Earth's heroes and judged Spider-Man and Hulk unworthy to be in his collection due to them being menaces. Collector ejects them into the garbage chute, where they manage to escape. As Collector goes into phase two of his plans, Hulk frees his team to help fight Collector. Guys, he's coming back! Collector then sends his probes to catch the escaped heroes so that he can work on his plan to make his collection priceless. The agents of Smash figure out that Collector plans to make his collection priceless by blowing up the Earth. Red Hulk and A-Bomb work to disarm Collector's bomb while Hulk and Spider-Man confront him, who still considers Hulk and Spider-Man unworthy. Collector grows in size as he grabs Hulk and Spider-Man in his hands. Ow. Organs. Squishing. Hulk talks about Spider-Man's true hero self as the Collector drops Hulk. Collector is surprised that Spider-Man is a teenager and Peter Parker's face is pixelated as Hulk knocks Spider-Man out of Collector's hands. After She-Hulk and Scar teleport the other heroes off the ship, the Collector remains on board. The ship explodes due to the bomb and Red Hulk and A-Bomb fail to disarm it, becoming unintentionally trapped. The Collector escapes before the explosion and sends a holographic message to the agents of Smash, promising to return one day. He vows to collect them first before targeting the rest of Earth's heroes. Ego the Living Planet arrives near Earth, causing Hulk and the agents of Smash to investigate. After an attack on Ego from their spaceship, Smash is surprised that Planet has sentience as their ship gets caught in his gravity and causes it to crash. Ego reveals that he has absorbed planets to grow in size. Hulk and the team then start to pummel the Living Planet. Red Hulk suggests that they go into Ego's body to take out his brain as they fall into the Living Planet's mouth. Smash then works to break their way through Ego's teeth as Red Hulk blasts a hole through one of the Living Planet's teeth and gets out. After getting out of Ego's mouth, the agents of Smash fight their way past the appearance of acid-spewing zits. They make it to Ego's nose and Red Hulk is sucked into Ego's nose. However, Red Hulk's approach towards Earth causes gravity quakes on Earth. When Red Hulk fires in Ego's nose, it ends up sneezing out Red Hulk as Hulk is knocked off of Ego. Ego states to the agents of Smash that Earth will soon be extinguished by him. Thankfully, with help from a shuttle piloted by S.H.I.E.L.D. astronauts, Hulk gets back on Ego as the agents of Smash free Red Hulk from Ego's mucus. Hulk then has his teammates rip out Ego the Living Planet's nose hairs, causing him to sneeze. This time, the agents of Smash grab onto one of Ego's nose hairs. After Hulk lands an attack on Ego's brain, the agents of Smash find Ego's ego section as he tries to get Red Hulk to rule with him. Red Hulk doesn't fall for it and Hulk tells Ego that he can either leave their galaxy or they can slam dunk him into the sun. Ego submits and leaves the galaxy. When the agents of Smash arrive in the Savage Land, Sauron leads an army of laser-mounted Pyranodons in an attack upon their jump jet. During the fight, Sauron drains the energy from one of the Pteranodons, where he manages to knock a bomb off the jump jet. Sarvaman states that he and his dinosaurs survived extinction and that man's time on Earth will be at its end. While Sauron controls Devil Dinosaur into attacking a bomb and Red Hulk, she Hulk and Scar find Sauron's Lizardman allies using a special drill in the Super Volcano. Sauron is alerted about the situation at the Super Volcano and commands Devil Dinosaur to finish the job. Upon being free from Sauron's mind control, Devil Dinosaur vomits a bomb and becomes friends with him. Devil Dinosaur helps to fight Sauron's forces and destroy the drill. Meanwhile, Sauron engages Scar in battle as he tries to mind control him and drain the energies of him and She-Hulk. Hulk, Red Hulk, A-Bomb, and Devil Dinosaur arrive. Hulk fights Sauron while the others work to stop the drill. Sauron then tries to drain Hulk's energy, which doesn't work. After the drill is destroyed, a weakened Sauron flees from the Pteranodons while the Devil Dinosaur is brought back with the Agents of Smash as their pet. Leader uses a shrink ray placed in a miniature golf course section to shrink the agents of Smash. He then contacts them where he mentions that he has shrunken them in his plot to crush them like ants. 
He later on arrives where the truth between his connections with Scar and Scar's lost memories is revealed and Leader restores Scar to normal size. He then attacks the agents of Smash, all claiming that he has promised their destruction. Scar, on the other side, then makes his choice where he grabs Leader and goes on the attack enough for the agents of Smash to be free from Leader's mental attack. The agents of Smash go on the attack and defeat him. Afterwards, when Scar states to Leader that Earth is his home, Leader escapes and charges the Shrink Ray to go into overdrive that shrinks the entire golf course. Luffy leads the Frost Giants in a plot to take over the Nine Worlds. Upon confronting Luffy, the Hulks and Thor end up subdued by the cold winds and are captured. Luffy arrives revealing his plot and even comments that he doesn't know what Thor sees in the humans. She Hulk breaks free from the ice and frees Thor and the Hulks while Luffy gets away. After defeating the three-handed ice serpent, the agents of Smash and Thor arrive at Luffy's lair as Luffy unleashes his ice creatures on them. Following the plug-up of the ice, Luffy states that they have helped to free Eumer, who will help bring an endless winter to Earth. Eumer then attacks Thor and the Hulks as they work to defeat Eumer. When Scar tries to repeatedly stab Eumer, he freezes Scar who is caught by a bomb before he can hit the ground. Thor tells Hulk that they will have to find Eumer's weak spot and since Scar's sword was left in Eumer, the Hulks act to attack the weak spot. Before Eimer can hit a bomb, She-Hulk gets both of them out of the way. Thor comes up with a plan where he and Hulk attack Red Hulk enough to heat him up and throw him towards Ymir, which cracks up Ymir. Thor then fires his lightning which shatters Ymir as Luffy retreats back to Jotunheim. Mole Man was ridiculed for his Hollow Earth theories when he moved to Subterranea and his history with the Fantastic Four is mentioned as well. Hulk encounters Mole Man where they have been captured by the giant larva beasts. A bomb comes to their aid where they discover that the larva beast eggs were placed upon a floor with lava underneath for incubation. Mole Man also informs them that they will also have to deal with the queen larva beast before any more of the larva beasts can make it to the surface. Mole Man uses the moloids to help fight the queen larva beast. After the queen larva beasts are defeated, Mole Man and the moloids return to Subterranea. The agents of Smash encounter Wolverine during their Canada vacation where he has been bitten by the Wendigo. Wolverine's healing factor restores him to normal and he reveals that the Wendigos have bitten the people at the ski resort. Wolverine and the agents of Smash encounter the Wendigos where they end up fighting them while trying not to get bitten or scratched. Hulk finds that the Wendigos are being controlled by the Wendigo King. After the first fight, A-Bomb discovers that he has been scratched by a Wendigo. A bomb looks up the information where they must end the Wendigo curse by defeating the Wendigo King. When Wolverine and the Agents of Smash arrive near the Wendigo King's lair, they end up fighting their way past the Wendigos to a tram. Unfortunately, A-Bomb succumbs to the scratch and transforms into a Wendigo. During the fight on the tram, Wolverine had to cut the cables to the tram to escape from the Wendigos. Hulk and Wolverine discover that She-Hulk, Red Hulk, and Scar all have been infected by the Wendigos and have transformed into Wendigos. Hulk is reluctant to fight back and he too becomes scratched. Hulk ends up smashing the side of the mountain to cause an avalanche that buries his infected teammates. Hulk and Wolverine find the Wendigo King's lair and fight past the Wendigos in order to get to the Wendigo King whose power is from another world. Hulk and Wolverine have a hard time fighting the Wendigo King up to the point where Hulk transforms into a Wendigo as he fights the transformation. Using the fastball special, Hulk throws Wolverine towards the Wendigo King's necklace which undoes the Wendigo curse on everyone. Afterwards, A-Bomb smashes the remains of the necklace to evade a sequel to the Agents of Smash's fight with the Wendigo. Absorbing Man and the Wrecking Crew start a riot at the vault. Scar takes on Absorbing Man and is knocked back by his attack. Hulk then engages Absorbing Man until Scar throws a rock at him. When Absorbing Man grabs Scar's energy whip, he knocks down Scar and hijacks She-Hulk's jet. Afterwards, when Scar shoots down the jet and it crashes, She-Hulk wonders how the Absorbing Man got out. Doc Samson is called in by Hulk in order to train Scar to be civilized. He even tries hypnosis on Scar until their therapy session ends up being crashed by the Agents of Smash's fight with Absorbing Man. After the jet is dragged back to the Agents of Smash's base, Hulk discovers that Absorbing Man has absorbed some gamma energy. As Hulk fights Absorbing Man, Hulk tries to warn Absorbing Man that he can lose control. Their battle ends up crashing Doc Samson's therapy with Scar. As Absorbing Man approaches the base's reactor, he starts to absorb the energy from the reactor as he starts to lose control. Upon Hulk saying please, Scar ends up fighting Absorbing Man and tricks him into absorbing the papers in a book where he defeats him. After Absorbing Man is defeated, Doc Samson states that the Hulks have never changed and leaves their base in an insane fashion. Blastar attacks Hoover Dam and fights the agents of Smash. He has special negative zone snakes to inject their venom, which causes them to be petrified. Hulk travels to the Baxter building in New York to use the Fantastic Four's Negative Zone portal. 
However, when Hulk and Thing enter the negative zone, they end up fighting Blastar at Leader's lair. Meanwhile, Anihilus is seen with the Leader, where it is shown that the Leader had confiscated Anihilus' cosmic control rod and modified it. Blastar is defeated by Thing while the Hulk battles the Leader. After Leader is defeated by Hulk, Anihilus reclaims the cosmic control rod and escapes, while Hulk is still fighting Leader. Abomination of Villain from Red Hulk's past takes out the agents of Smash one by one to fulfill revenge and frame the team for destroying Vista Verde. Abomination manages to break off from his watery prison and escape, and upon learning about Red's new occupation as a member of Smash, he plots to get revenge on Red for supposedly betraying him and siding with the Hulk. As a start, Abomination captures Scar outside the Hulk Gamma base before breaking in. This is made easy for him, because he used to work there for Ross before his transformation. After infiltrating the base, Abomination hacks into the base's computer systems, using the defense system against Hulk and the agents, leading to the capture of She-Hulk and A-Bomb. He also manages to defeat and knock down the agent's pet Tyrannosaur, the Devil Dinosaur. Hulk and Red are the only ones left to fight him. Eventually, Red finds Scar, A-Bomb, and She-Hulk all tied up in a large room where an anti-gamma bomb is being rigged to blow, which would destroy half of North America and kill millions. Abomination then appears and restrains Red, saying that he has set the bomb to blow, and is now planning to escape by using the agent's escape rocket while letting the agents take the blame for the destruction. Fortunately, Hulk manages to free his team before pursuing Abomination in the rocket chamber. Since Red isn't able to defuse the bomb, he decides to plant it inside the rocket and set it off to fly away from the atmosphere to ensure that the continent remains safe from harm. Upon learning this from Red as the rocket flies off, Hulk attempts to warn Abomination to get off the rocket, but Abomination refuses and kicks Hulk away from the rocket, only to realize too late that the bomb is inside it, just as the last seconds are up. As a result, the rocket explodes and the threat of Abomination is over. However, though it seems that Abomination might have perished in the explosion, Red believes otherwise knowing that Abomination can survive such a dangerous event and that he will return to get revenge on the Agents of Smash. Impossible Man arrives at the base of the Agents of Smash, posing as Fin Fang Foom. He fights them until Hulk sees through his ploy. Hulk even mentions that the Avengers have a record on Impossible Man. Impossible Man states that he wants to join the Hulks and transforms into a Hulk version of himself. Impossible Man even uses his powers to combine Hulk and Red Hulk into the two-headed compound Hulk. When Sauron attacks a seaside amusement park with an army of prehistoric sea creatures, Impossible Man joins the Agents of Smash in fighting Sauron. He manages to trap Sauron, but his powers are drained by Sauron, who uses them to fight the Agents of Smash, even summoning Fin Fang Foom. After Impossible Man regains his powers and Fin Fang Foom knocks Sauron far out into the ocean, Impossible Man borrows a device from Henry Pym's laboratory, which he uses to grow the two-headed compound Hulk to a large size where he tosses Fin Fang Foom out to sea. Impossible Man then leaves to get his footage uploaded. Impossible Man returns and splits the two-headed compound Hulk back into Hulk and Red Hulk. When Impossible Man asks if he can join the show as their next-door neighbor, Hulk and Red Hulk end up punching Impossible Man. When the Agents of Smash arrive at a mall to do some shopping, Deathluck teleports into a mall where he targets a woman only to end up fighting the Agents of Smash, where Deathluck claims that she is no girl. She-Hulk discovers that Deathlock was right about the girl who happens to be Super Scroll in disguise, as the other people in the mall are revealed to be scrolls preparing for the scroll invasion of Earth. As Super Scroll goes invisible to prepare the device that would eradicate the humans, Deathlock ends up firing on the scrolls when they take form of the Agents of Smash members. Deathlock tells the Agents of Smash that this date on Earth would be the day when the scrolls eradicate the human race and terraform Earth to settle on it. As Super Scroll gets into the ship where the weapon is in and takes off, Deathlock's temporal computer system declares Deathlock's mission a failure with Deathlock, claiming that the mission is not over yet. Following in their jet, the Agents of Smash join Deathlock upon the Scroll ship, where Hulk and she, Hulk, follow Deathlock to Super Scroll. After Hulk defeats Super Scroll, Deathlock activates his self destruct as she, Hulk, takes out Deathlock's core, which destroys the ship. She, Hulk, was able to put a new core made by Iron Man into Deathlock where the Mall Flyer was part of Deathlock's way to inform the Agents of Smash about the Scrolls' plot. Annoying with his fellow Agents of Smash members, Hulk takes off for some alone time and stumbles onto an island of monsters. He finds a nest with ostrich-sized eggs and decides to make an omelette, but ends up defending the eggs from a gigantic, carnivorous turtle. He throws the turtle away, sending it spinning through the air. The eggs hatch into four monsters that become attached to Hulk and follow him. Back at the base, the Hulks are wrecking the place searching for a cricket. 
The little monsters with Hulk eat sticks and shed their skin as they grow, changing color to red, green, blue, and gray. One burps flame breath in Hulk's face. Suddenly, a ship arrives and a man riding a giant bird appears. He introduces himself as Arkin and reveals he shot Hulk down. Arkin demands Hulk step away from his prey and zaps Hulk with a lightning bolt. Hulk takes the little monsters and runs. More lightning bolts follow and the monsters run away. Hulk leaps up, hits Arkin a few times and retreats. Arkin decides to go after Hulk instead of the baby monsters. The baby monsters eventually meet back up with Hulk. Back at base, the Hulks are destroying their own base trying to kill a cricket. Hulk fears they're becoming too violent. Meanwhile, Hulk carries the baby monsters up a mountain in a backpack to get a better signal for his distress beacon. The babies escape and are trapped by an electro trap set by Arkin. Hulk fights Arkin and his mount who takes the net to their lair. Hulk debates why he's rescuing the baby monsters but decides to save them. At Arkin's lair, Hulk is captured and faces a 20-foot goon, mother of the baby monsters. Arkin plans to train the babies to fight for him inspired by hunting Earth's heroes. Hulk tricks the exit spewing Goom into freeing them, and they fight Arkin together. The lair explodes, and Hulk sentences Arkin to stay on the island without his ship or weapons. Luckily, Hulk finds a Hulk chip pod to return home. Back at the base, the Hulks are playing Go Fish when Hulk returns. The cricket chirps again, revealing its Hulk's signal with the sound altered by Rick's gizmo. The world finally accepts the Agents of Smash as heroes. Before the Agents of Smash can enjoy their success, a surprise attack from Leader and his Agents of Crash threatens to destroy Vista Verde and the Hulk's reputation. Assembled by the Leader as part of his master plan to destroy the Agents of Smash, he puts together a team made up of their deadliest foes including the Abomination, Absorbing Man, Titania, Blastor, and Sauron. He provides each member with stealth belts designed so that only Gamma-powered beings like the Hulks can see them. He also uses Adamantium so that they are not destroyed during the confrontation. He waits to deploy them until the Agents of Smash achieve their goal for the world to see them as heroes so that their defeat would be more significant. That day comes after the Agents of Smash team up with the Fantastic Four to stop the Toad Men. While the rest of the team is away, Hulk converses with the leader in his cell. However, he makes Hulk believe he escaped by showing himself as a hologram. Hulk smashes his cell wall, and the leader tells him that he planted five Gamma Bombs in Vista Verde, which will blow up in 13 minutes. When the Hulk leaves, the leader is revealed to still be in his cell and escapes through his destroyed cell wall. Hulk then calls out for his team and informs them of the situation. Arriving at Vista Verde, Hulk scares the people nearby and tells his team to search for the bombs. They are attacked by Crash and both teams collide. The fight creates a lot of collateral damage and since Kiraiash uses their belts, the people only see the Hulks destroying the city. The agents of Smash ultimately defeat their foes at the cost of Vista Verde ending in ruins. Hulk finds a transmitter in his statue where the leader reveals that the five Gamma Bombs that destroyed Vista Verde were a trick by him. When the military arrives, the Agents of Smash try to show them the unconscious Kirash members, but they can't see them, forcing the Hulks to flee with the world blaming them for destroying the only city that ever loved them. When the leader tries to escape through a portal, the Agents of Smash follow and wind up in a mysterious world, which Scar reveals to be his home. A bomb says that a weird-looking guy framed the team and they got stranded on Scar's home planet. The scene cuts back to the gladiator arena from last time, where the crowd is going wild. The leader, who is actually leading something for once, welcomes them. He brags about his plan to take over Earth, and the games begin. The crowd hates Scar for something he did in the past. The leader shows that the Hulk's chest devices are linked to his mind control crown. Like in Attack of the Clones, the leader releases a monster for them to fight. Hulk throws the monster away, not in the mood for entertainment. The leader orders the Hulks to be thrown into the pit and zaps the crowd to agree. One zap later, the Agents of Smash wake up in the pit, except for She-Hulk, who is missing. A rude guard named Heroem takes the team deeper into the pit, which turns out to be a mine. Rick makes a bad joke, causing a bug-faced prisoner named Meek to blink a few times enough for a subtitle to introduce him. Meanwhile, Scott remembers he used to be a slave driver like Heroem. Deep in the mine, Meek tells the Hulks there's a monster down there. Hulk gets zapped for asking what they're digging for, and they find a bunch of control chips on a table. Hulk quickly realizes they'll end up wearing them. Meanwhile, She-Hulk wakes up in a palace with two robot attendants trying to make her pretty. She smashes them, and the leader tells her she's his queen hostage while putting a crown on her. Scar remembers everyone hates him for being a torturer, especially Korg. When the guards take a break, Korg punches Scar, leading to a big brawl with the prisoners. Korg throws Scar into the belly of the pit, and Hulk jumps in to save him. The guards return, and Red Hulk gets angry generating heat that makes his control chip spark. 
He tells Abom to go invisible and find She-Hulk while they rally the prisoners for a breakout. Scar and Hulk meet in the underground caverns after Scar accidentally hits Hulk with a bone club. They have a brief fight with the monster Meek was scared of earlier, then head into a cave Scar recognizes. At the palace, She-Hulk gets her hair brushed by a maroon-skinned alien maid named Elo Kai-Fi. She tells Elo to find Hulk, but Elo reports back to Red Hulk instead. Red Hulk tells a bomb to get Korra on their side, which he does with a speech about freedom. They fake a fight to distract the guards, which turns into a real fight. Kor gives an inspiring speech and the slaves win. Meek tells a bomb that Scar won't be forgiven easily. Meanwhile, the leader tells She-Hulk that Hulk and Scar have escaped. She sasses him, so he zaps her. Scar takes Hulk deep into the cave, showing him his life story painted on the walls. They mention the leader can make people forget things, but it's not a clear explanation. Scar remembers he was an abandoned baby, raised by a kind couple before the leader made him do bad things. Suddenly, the leader arrives with troops and captures Hulk and Scar. They wake up in the arena, when the leader zaps She-Hulk to force Hulk and Scar to fight. Scar fights Hulk to save She-Hulk. A bomb and Red Hulk go to hijack the leader's ship. During the fight, Elo gives She-Hulk an extra control chip. Hulk convinces Scar they can beat the leader. Scar throws a sword at the leader and apologizes to the crowd for his past actions, but the leader zaps him. Korg shows up and demands their release. The leader zaps everyone. She-Hulk slaps the extra control chip on the leader, shorting out his system and deactivating all the chips. She-Hulk throws the leader into the arena and Hulk and Scar hit him. A bomb and Red Hulk arrive with the leader's ship and drop control chips on him. The leader goes missing and Korg and Elo decide to reform the government. Hulk leaves them a camera to keep in touch. The lesson about second chances is learned and the agents of Smash head off in their ship with coordinates set to Earth. A bomb talks to one of his floating cameras in the editing room and we cut to the Hulks who are about to beat up Blastar. They defeat Blastar and his monsters, but there's a lot of collateral damage including destroyed Christmas decorations. The Hulks complain to the camera before flying towards Gamma Base. As they sulk, Abon wishes on a shooting star for the perfect Christmas. The world whites out like Crisis on Infinite Earths and fades back in on a slightly different version of the show. We see Hulk Tower, which dwarfs Avengers Tower and Jonah Jameson wishes the Hulks happy holidays. What happened to the other Hulks is revealed and Abom explains he does more than make web videos. She-Hulk is now a successful actor. Their butler, the leader, answers the door for the president, Red Hulk, who just got his face carved on Minty Rushmore, escorted by Nick Fury. Hulk, who apparently has no job, is wearing an ugly Christmas sweater and petting his dinosaur. As a bomb prepares to light the Yule log, something comes down the chimney. It's Matt Santa, it's Rocket Raccoon from the Guardians of the Galaxy. After a scuffle, Rocket shoots some floating robot drones and disables the image inducer over the fireplace. The illusion ends and the Hulks realize their fantasies weren't real. They smash their way out and find themselves surrounded by containment units. Rocket explains that the device in the room rewrites minds to keep inmates docile. They thought Rocket was just a mindless animal and put him with other animals. His hologram threatens the heroes and they shoot the drones. The Collector's plan was to use their fantasies to contain them. Rocket tells them they were transporting the Orb of Truth to a peace summit between the Kree and the Shi'ar. The Shi'ar Queen is supposed to present it to the Kree leader. Rocket and a bomb go to a console to find the rest of the Guardians. They locate them, but Rocket gets knocked out. We cut to the Guardians being introduced by Queen Lelandra of the Shi'ar before the Hulks smash into their holocell. A hero-on-hero -hero fight breaks out because Rocket is co-ed, but Hulk disables the image inducer and the hologram fades. The heroes decide to team up to get the real orb back. Once Rocket wakes up, he vouches for the agents of Smash. They head through the Collector's ship, bantering along the way. They reach the landing bay where their ship is, but the Collector, who can now change size, appears with the orb to stop them. Hulk offers himself and his team in exchange for letting the Guardians and the orb go, but the Collector wants everything. After a fruitless fight, the Collector's memory wiper activates. They light the Yule log and the Guardians join for the holidays with their holocell still broken. After the obligatory, what is this Christmas? Joke, Star-Lord presents the Orb of Truth to Hulk who gets suspicious and places it on the tree Groot has been trying to flirt with. Hulk smashes the old holo projector spot but finds nothing. Hulk tricks Rocket into shooting the orb off the tree by pretending to be anti-raccoon. Rocket zaps the orb and Hulk smashes it, returning everything to normal. The now gigantic collector, wearing the orb, rips off the holosuit roof and decides to wipe their minds completely. Using teamwork and fancy moves, the heroes steal the orb and place it in the path of the memory white beam. The device hits the Collector, 
who, in the spirit of Christmas, stops being a Scrooge and agrees to release all the living beings in his collection. Hulk gives the orb to Star-Lord, and they rush to the Shear homeworld, where Lelandra receives it without any problems. In the spirit of peace and goodwill, the Hulks take the Guardians back to Vista Verde for a meal at Herb's Gamma Burgers. Our hero's new ship circles a planet and they follow a trail to the cargo bay, falling into the leader's trap. After some banter, the leader opens the cargo bay door, sucking the Hulks into space. After the opening titles, the agents of Smash jam the hole with cargo and split up to find the leader. The leader activates internal traps. One trap captures Hulk, beginning to crush him. Meanwhile, she, Hulk, and Scar try to hack the internal systems but fail. The computer warns that the ship is entering a hostile star system and She Hulk rips out some wires which trigger the robot butlers to become warbits. Red Hulk and Abon face guns popping out of the walls and the gravity turns off, making them aerial targets. Hulk is the first to escape his bonds after the leader taunts him, outlining his plan to return to Earth as a hero. Red Hulk and Abom escape using some quick maneuvers and Hulk saves She Hulk and Scar. Hulk starts ranting, so She-Hulk calms him down by rubbing his shoulders. She-Hulk then uses the computer to locate the leader, who is hiding in the wall. Before they can act, the leader sends poison gas into their control room. Hulk smashes the wall, exposing the leader to his own gas. She-Hulk deactivates the gas. They restrain the leader and debate what to do with him, when the ship begins shaking as they enter an asteroid belt. Another ship in the asteroid belt is firing at Ego and Hulk locks the leader in the bathroom, while the team helps Ego's attackers. They shoot a meteor out of the way of the other ship and an alien beams aboard. Hulk explains they were trying to help and Ronan accepts their offer, saying they will be Ego's judge, jury, and executioner. She Hulk declines, reminding Hulk that they chose not to kill Ego because they're heroes. Ronan offers directions back home in exchange for help, and Hulk agrees. She Hulk expresses distrust of Ronan in a cute way, while Abom jokes about making Ronan at best of DVE. The Hulks enter Ego's atmosphere on rocket boards, and Ego counters with his beard hair, ensnaring the team. Ronan rescues them, and they head for Ego's ear instead of his nose. Ronan talks too loud, causing the ear canal to lash out. After landing in the earwax, they forge ahead to Ego's brain cavity. Despite Ego's attempts to stop them, they reach his tiny brain ball, and Hulk prepares to smash it, but he can't go through with it. Hulk tells Ronan not to hurt Ego, so Ronan simply puts a band on Ego's head which gives the Kree control of the planetoids to use as a weapon. So our designated heroes begin defending Ego by attacking the Kree soldiers themselves. Hulk removes Ego from his brain controls. This will kill Ego in the long run, so Hulk vows to find a way to get the controller ban off, and then get Ego back to his controls. After some more fighting, including a game of keep away involving Ego, they make their way to the surface through the planetoids' tear ducts. More Kree swoop in on the backs of their mounts, so the Hulks attack the eyeball, so the Tears can take out the soldiers. The Kree surrender, but it's not over. As Ronan explains, he might not have control over Ego, but he doesn't have to control Ego. He just needs Ego to stay still for a bit. To answer his question, Galactus arrives with his new advisor, Firelord. When last we left our heroes, Hulk took up modern dance, Red Hulk grew his mustache back, Scar ate his own head, and a bomb was pregnant with She-Hulk's baby. Now Scar tries to attack Ronan's hologram, but the team tells him it's not real. Ronan explains that Ego is now connected to an antimatter bomb that will destroy Ego and Galactus. Hulk tries to remove the bomb, but gets shocked. Meanwhile, Ronan's hologram greets Galactus and tells him the planet is his. Firelord warns the Hulks to leave, but they refuse. They try to explain about the trap, but Firelord attacks them. Ego also offers to let them leave, but they decline, making him sad. Hulk tries to warn Fear Alert again, but Firelord laughs and starts another fight. He then knocks Fair Alert out, but Galactus begins hooking his feeding machine to the planet. Hulk warns Galactus about the bomb, but Galactus doesn't believe him and attacks. The Hulks survive and form a plan. They use the leader's remote control to bring down their ship and sabotage Galactus' ship. Hulk distracts Galactus while the others bring Fire Lord and the leader to Galactus' ship. Inside Galactus' control room, the leader starts working on the energy cannon. He tries to exterminate the Smashers and outlines his plan to take over Earth. Galactus turns on his feeding machine, and Hulk goes up Ego's nose for cover. On Galactus' ship, Fertilord wakes up and takes control from the leader. The Hulk show him scans proving Ego is booby-trapped. Firelord tries to warn Galactus, but he's too hungry to listen. Ego is too weak to fight back, so Hulk plugs himself into Ego's brain controls. Planet Hulk and Galactus fight. Galactus triggers the bomb, but Red Hulk has Fertilord shoot the feeding machine with Galactus' ship's energy cannon which saves the day. 
Ego's bomb falls off, Galactus survives, and Hulk asks for directions to Earth. Fire Alert explains to Galactus, who is grateful the agents of Smash saved him. The Hulks return to their ship, and Ego's face bids them farewell, shooting lasers that point them to Earth. The Hulks set course for Earth, and Hulk tells Red Hulk they need the leader to clear their names. She Hulk picks up a transmission on all frequencies, and Hulk vows to find a way home. The Hulks are on a hijacked ship, feeling worried that they might never get home. Hulk is focused on their goal, while Red Hulk is working out. Hulk listens to strange radio broadcasts and finds their old TV signals from Earth. He locks onto one with a clown named Obnoxio, and a bomb declares his hatred of clowns. Hulk then picks up a signal that shouldn't have reached them yet, featuring J. Jonah Jameson yelling about the Hulks. Hulk gets so angry that he breaks a camera by yelling at it. They discover a nearby wormhole leading to Earth, but before they can set a course, the power cuts out and they enter a black mass. The lights come back on, and a bomb quotes Star Wars, saying, I got a bad feeling about this. As they go further, the Silver Surfer suddenly attacks, and Hulk explains that Silver Surfer used to be a good guy. The team puts on spacesuits and goes out on rocket boards. Surfer yells that the Void is driving him insane, so Hulk loses control and takes him down. They bring Surfer to the med bay, and She-Hulk complains about the temperature as they scan Surfer's vitals. He's in a semi-coma, and the computer doesn't know when he'll wake up. For now, the plan remains the same. Fly home. A bomb is on monitor duty when he sees something strange. Suddenly, Obnoxio the Clown plays peekaboo with him on the screen, which scares him. Red Hulk tries to make a sandwich, but can't open the pickles or cut butter. Scar has trouble with an oven that acts like a Decepticon. But Red Hulk manages to unplug it. Hulk tries to get answers from Leader on how to wake up the Silver Surfer, but Leader can only stammer, and his head shrinks to normal size. Before Hulk can deal with this, She-Hulk calls him to the engine room, and his shadow starts smiling ominously. In the engine room, She-Hulk is freezing, even though it's 90 degrees. A bomb mutters about clowns, Hulk gets increasingly angry, Scar attacks the monitors, and a tired, skinny Red Hulk stumbles in. Something is definitely wrong. Then creepy laughter fills the hallways, and Obnoxio appears behind Hulk. Obnoxio attacks the team with Joker-like gags and Hulk's shadow comes to life. The Silver Surfer reappears and says a bomb must face his fear to stop the clown. A bomb stands up to Obnoxio and the clown disappears in a blast of confetti. The Hulks regroup to figure out how to deal with their fears. Silver Surfer explains they're inside a living void called the Null that feeds on fear. The Null wants to use the wormhole to reach Earth and feed on global fear. As they fly deeper into the Null, everyone's fears return. Hulk fights his shadow. A bomb turns into a clown, She Hulk becomes ice, Red Hulk shrivels up, and Scar turns into Megatron and gets stuck in a wall. Even the surfer is trapped by his fear until Dark Hulk punches him free. Dark Hulk goes on a rampage, and Red Hulk, usually so strong, lies on the ground as a withered husk. Hulk's love for his family lets him overpower his fears, and the others follow suit except for Red Hulk and She Hulk. Seeing She-Hulk still cold and lifeless allows Red Hulk to overcome his fear, and gets mad enough to generate the heat needed to melt her out. Taking a cue from every Final Fantasy game ever made, the Null pulls out all the stops and becomes a gigantic combination of all their fears. Despite the team's best rocket board maneuvers, each and every one of them ends up entangled by the Null's tentacles. Surfer quickly explains that the wormhole can be closed, but only from the other end, so they work together to free the Surfer, who heads off through the portal, promising to spread the word to Earth about the Hulk's bravery. The plan succeeds, and the Null is quickly defeated, having lost the fears of Earth to feed on. With no food, the Null dissipates into nothingness. Back on the ship, they all make fun of each other over their fears. Our heroes are still lost in space, battling a magnetic storm, and Rick wonders how the leader can sleep through it all. She Hulk pilots the ship through the storm, while Hulk tells the camera they've been lost for a while and are feeling alone and hopeless. Red Hulk is depressed, saying even if they get home, Earth still hates them, so Hulk takes Red Hulk aside to cheer him up. As the ship exits the storm, they receive a message from Captain America and the Avengers, who have been searching for them. Cap sends coordinates to a nearby planet, and the Hulks head there. A bomb is excited to meet the Avengers, but everyone's mood drops when Cap arrests Hulk. A fight breaks out, but something seems off. The Avengers are using futuristic weapons, Falcon is missing, and Cap's battle cry is strange. Hulk breaks Iron Man's helmet revealing that the Avengers are actually Skrulls, shape-shifting aliens from the past. With the Fox Avengers defeated, Red Hulk wants to leave, but Hulk thinks they should stop the Skrulls' plan. Before they can argue, the Guardians of the Galaxy appear. Red Hulk attacks, thinking they're Skrulls, and the Guardians fire back, thinking the Hulks are Skrulls. 
Rocket Raccoon realizes the Hulks aren't scrolls and the fighting stops. The Guardians explain they've been tracking the scrolls who are trying to create super soldiers. Suddenly, She Hulk and A Bomb turn into scrolls. The scrolls order to capture the gamma powered ones and open fire. Thanks to Groot's defense and Hulk's offense, they defeat the scrolls easily. After a few threats, the scrolls reveal they've taken the other Hulks to drain their gamma energy. The heroes board Star Lord's ship to track the captive Hulks. Drax and Red Hulk bond a bit before they spot the train transporting the Hulks, and the train spots them too and opens fire. The heroes jump onto the train to fight the Skrulls, and Super Skrull shows up for revenge against Hulk. Hulk, Star Lord, Rocket, and Groot fight Super Skrull, while the others search for the captive Hulks. Gamera and Drax get captured, and the Skrulls, thinking they're gamma powered, take them to be processed. Red Hulk finds where the others are held, but Scar, thinking Red Hulk is a Skrull, kicks him off the train. Super Scroll disconnects Hulk's train car and summons insect minions to attack them. Hulk uses a sonic clap to defeat the bugs, but they are no closer to saving the others. Red Hulk reunites with Hulk's group, still gloomy, but they quickly find the main scroll base. They see a weird green goo with pods connected to it. One pod contains the other Hulks, and another holds Drax and Gamera. The Hulk's pod is lower into the goo, where their gamma energy is drained, creating Hulk scrolls or Skrulks. Red Hulk thinks the situation is hopeless, but Hulk encourages him to take action. Red Hulk decides to use the dead insectoid drones as camouflage to sneak into the base. The plan works because the Skrulls have poor security. The Skrulls try the Gamma procedure on Drax and Gamera again, but realize they aren't Gamma-powered and set them aside. Hulk and the remaining heroes launch their plan to smash everything up. Groot rescues Sheik Hulk, A-Bomb, and Scar before more energy is drained. Everyone reunites for the final battle, but it doesn't go well at first. The Skrulks overpower Red Hulk and Super Skrull has the upper hand against Star-Lord and Rocket. Red Hulk jumps into the Gamma Goo becoming a giant brute strong enough to fight two Skrulks at once. Rocket finds the Skrull spaceship and rigs it to explode by messing with a control panel. Despite the explosions, the facility remains intact. Hulk and Red Hulk team up to defeat Super Skrull, burying him under a pile of unconscious Skrulls. The two teams gather at Star-Lord's ship and praise Red Hulk, who burned up his extra gamma energy fighting the Skrulks. Star-Lord gives Hulk a memory drive with a map to get them back to Earth. The team boards their ship and a bomb brags to the leader that they now have coordinates for Earth. The Hulks are still lost in space and now facing shortage of supplies. They're low on food and they must ration toilet paper. Hulk, using a star chart from the Guardians of the Galaxy, finds a wormhole to Earth, but it's unstable. Scar, feeling down, overhears the leader complaining about Hulk not using the wormhole. This gives Scar an idea. He pushes She-Hulk out of the pilot's seat and sets a course for the wormhole, despite being clueless about navigation. Hulk punches Scar, but the coordinates are locked in and the leader smiles as they enter the wormhole. Later on, they find themselves orbiting Earth while the leader is on bathroom cleanup duty. When they land in New Mexico, they find a tropical paradise and are attacked by lizard men. After defeating them, a purple figure called Master by the Lizard Men appears. Hulk realizes the wormhole has taken them to the future. High Evolutionary explains that after the Hulks went missing, Earth was hit by a meteor, humans became savages, and he turned everyone into lizard men to recreate society. The Hulks plan to change the past by returning through the wormhole, but High Evolutionary captures Hulk and dreams of creating monsters by evolving him. He turns the other Hulks into cave Hulks except for Scar, who is immune. High Evolutionary boasts that the primitive Hulks won't oppose him, and he's right. She-Hulk sniffs her armpit, Red Hulk eats his own snot, and A-Bomb bashes a rock against his face. Scar, having recovered from the shock of the High Evolutionary's blast, tries to attack him, but just gets blasted again. Scar attempts to lead the team to victory, however, they're too stupid to listen. So they ignore Scar while High Evolutionary waxes on about how he's going to improve the Hulk's DNA before floating away. Scar, so try and get the others to go help Hulk, manages to get them to chant, Save Hulk. They all run off in different directions while still chanting. Scar realizes he needs to talk to the only smart person left, the leader, who is plunging a toilet. Scar explains the situation via a video communicator. He then goes to each Hulk and wins their hearts. He teaches a bomb not to hit himself with a rock, gives She-Hulk his kaboomering as a back scratcher, and gives Red Hulk a stick, which he pretends is a gun. High Evolutionary offers Hulk the chance to create a universe of reason and intellect. Hulk declines and is put into the evolution chamber and gassed. Meanwhile, the Smashers are outside the evil lair. Scar asks if anyone has a plan, a bomb suggests hitting himself in the face, Red Hulk complains his stick is out of ammo, and She-Hulk grins. 
Scar uses his head and decides to use Red Hulk's head as a battering ram. Once inside, Scar starts attacking the robots inside and leads the way to Hulk. Thanks to some stupidity, they stumble into High Evolutionary's main evolution room, where he's already evolved the Hulk into his evolutionary pinnacle, a pointy-eared, big-headed Hulk with bat wings. But worst of all, he calls High Evolutionary his master. A fight follows and Hulk shows off his new heat vision. He starts blathering on about probabilities, strategies, and smart people stuff. High Evolutionary announces his intent to devolve the rest of the Smasher into primordial slime. Hulk concedes the point and attacks the High Evolutionary while pointing out the flaw in evolution. They fight each other for a bit, discussing strategy until Scar manages to take High Evolutionary's technological evolution scepter thingy. But since Scar is, you know, an idiot, he turns Red Hulk into a slug. Scar knocks out High Evolutionary and saves Red Slug from being eaten by the others, restoring him with the Green Mist first while Hulk and High Evolutionary continue their fight, calculating each other's odds of winning. Red Hulk is soon back to normal, and goes to fix the others while Scar rejoins the fight, saving Hulk from High Evolutionary. This confuses Hulk, because the whole friendship thing is now a foreign concept to him. But when Scar explains it, Hulk remembers just how valuable friendship can be. The Hulk devolves himself back to normal, delivers a speech about friendship, and High Evolutionary gets hoist by his own P-Dart and devolves into a baby. In the aftermath, the Hulks end up back through the wormhole into their normal time. On Halloween night, the Hulks are currently preoccupied with trick or treat and snooping around in paper-thin costumes that in no way hide their Hulkness. Apparently, they are on the run from the army while also tracking a mysterious energy signature of some kid. Naturally, this is such an important thing to investigate that Red Hulk and Scar are trick-or-treating. She-Hulk, meanwhile, simply relishes the chance to be someone else for one night. But, as Red Hulk points out, that doesn't stop them from being seen as monsters for the other 364 days. Hulk's wrist doodad tracks the energy signature towards some old building. In the sky, they see a possible source of the signal, a literal monster truck shaped like a dragon. The commandos have orders straight from Nick Fury himself to bring down the agents of Smash, because of the Vista Verde incident. After some standard hero-on-hero -hero action, a portal opens up in the sky. This one leads to the Dark Dimension, where Dormammu is trying to use the evil energies of Halloween to break into the mortal realm. He can't quite break through the dimensional barrier, but he does manage to remotely steal a gigantic hourglass out of the Salem Witchcraft Museum. Both teams go to stop the theft, but to no avail. Dormammu begins using his evil hoodoo to start flipping it to the dark side, while sending one of his minions to stop the heroes. The Mindless One zaps a boatload of innocent bystanders, transforming them into more mindless ones. In the next fight, Red Hulk, Scar, and She-Hulk get transformed as well. But somehow, Hulk himself is immune to the transformation. And so is Frank. Werewolf by Night ends up transformed, and Dormammu begins taunting the heroes with various evil boasts as Blade himself gets transformed. The remaining heroes headed for the museum for shelter, but the Mindless Ones break in almost immediately. And Cantor deduces that Frank and Hulk may be immune to the transformations because they're already agents of chaos. After putting down Frank again, they get to work barricading the church. After that, they form a new plan. Step 1. Get to the Dark Dimension and flip the hard glass. There is no Step 2. And Cantu is hesitant to mess with such power again. The team calls over and boards the monster truck, and they take it over to the evil portal. Meanwhile, the Mindless Ones use their chaos stairs to weaken the dimensional barrier. This won't bring Dormammu to Earth, but it will bring Earth to Dormammu. After successfully reaching the Dark Dimension, thanks to Encantu's magic, they split up. Hulk and Frank go punch Dormammu while Abom and Encantu go try to flip back the hard glass. Naturally, Dormammu has the home court advantage and he nearly transforms the two into his servants. Over with the other two, ghosts start possessing Encantu while Abom tries to flip the hard glass. Back with Hulk, Dormammu fails to transform the Hulk. A single punch knocks down Dormammu, and a pep talk from a bomb restores Encantu's mind. Hulk helps talk a transformed Frank back to normal, and Encantu unleashes his breath on Dormammu, taking him out long enough for Hulk, a bomb, and Frank to flip the giant hard glass. To make the resolution simpler, the hard glass teleports back to the museum as the heroes escape the dark dimension in the monster truck, thanks to some help from Man Thing on the other side. Everyone goes back to normal, the day is saved, and the two teams part peacefully. The Hulks are searching for the leader while on the run from the army. To stay low, they fly the Hulk jet illegally low in New York City airspace. She-Hulk enjoys seeing the city again, but Hulk feels down about being a hated fugitive. 
that Bomb and Red Hulk are mad at the leader for more than the usual reasons. She-Hulk spots Devil Dinosaur's GPS tracker and sets a course. Meanwhile, Scar brings up a good point and says Devil might be angry after being abandoned for so long, but the others laugh it off. They land and find the Devil quickly by following the screams. Devil is upset, which worries Red Hulk and it turns out, someone is trying to ride Devil like a bull to protect civilians. I would try to build suspense as to this person's identity, but it's in the title of the episode. Spider-Man gets mocked off and Red Hulk whistles for his beloved pet, but something's wrong. Devil turns around and lunges straight at the Hulks. Devil runs deeper into Central Park and Spider-Man comments that Devil Dinosaur might not be the tamest creature. Spidey and the Hulks chase after Devil, but a bomb worries that Devil doesn't remember them. Spider-Man tells Hulk that this is unusually irresponsible, being uncharacteristically mean to him. Devil stays ahead of the heroes, causing destruction along the way. The Hulks manage to trap Devil with some cars and Spider-Man webs up his legs. With Devil momentarily calm, the Hulks smash up the city's streets to lead him into the abandoned subway below. Devil lies down with a tummy ache and a hologram of the leader appears from his collar. A squishing sound is heard and Red Hulk is not seen on screen, implying he reached up Devil's rear end. Devil, upset, runs down the tunnel. Spidey spins a leash for A-bomb, and they chase after him. Red Hulk gets hit by a subway during the chase, and the others reach Devil without him. She-Hulk offers to climb down Devil's throat, but then the timer is instantly reduced to zero. After the Gamma Blast, Devil appears to be gone, leaving only his oversized collar, which moves Red Hulk to tears. However, Spider-Man's Spider-Sense warns him that Devil has transformed into Devilzilla, a giant monster. The Hulks try to figure out how to stop Devilzilla from destroying New York City. Scar attempts to tame Devilzilla but gets stomped on, setting up a running gag. The Hulks urge civilians to seek safety while Jonah Jameson blames them for Devilzilla's rampage. Spider-Man realizes that Devilzilla must be hungry, causing him to eat everything in sight. Spider-Man asks what previously worked to calm Devil and A-Bomb mentions they use hot dogs. Spider-Man then decides to use himself as bait in a hot dog costume to lure Devilzilla toward the Hudson River. However, the army arrives in jump jets before the Avengers or S.H.I.E.L.D., which are both based in New York City. Spider-Man leads Devilzilla toward the river, with Scar getting stepped on again due to the rule of three. Red Hulk manages to block Devilzilla with a shipping container before it can devour Spider-Man. They try to jog Devilzilla's memory to no avail. She-Hulk suggests they need to regain Devilzilla's trust or bribe him with food like the dumpsters of pork bellies Hulk found. The food briefly calms Devilzilla, but the army's missiles anger him. General Abomination piloting the main army chopper enters the scene. The Hulks take out a second wave of missiles aimed at their pet, as well as a third. They all realize that Abomination is attacking Devil to get the Hulks to fight the military, which means that S.H.I.E.L.D. will redouble their efforts to track down and neutralize them. As such, the plan for now is to stay on the defensive. After getting knocked in the water, Hulk decides to forget his defense plan and jump straight through Abomination's chopper to punch him a lot. After the Abomination accuses the Hulk of betraying the world's trust, he loses it and unleashes his fury on the general. Over with Devilzilla, the army has escalated to lasers. Red Hulk runs to throw rock at their jump jets to crash them, meaning that the whole dumb attack them plan has been officially left behind. She-Hulk gives him a much-needed punch in the arm, but suddenly, a bomb has a new plan and it involves Spider-Man. After A-Bomb sits on Devilzilla's nose and apologizes for leaving him alone, he hits the beast ready for a treat. He then presses the spider on his chest to activate his scuba armor. Anyway, the guy inside his abomination calls in all the forces he can muster, so the hulks crush him under a single shipping container. Inside Devilzilla, Spider-Man and A-Bomb quickly find the Gamma Bomb. Using Spider-Man's spider sense and the process of elimination, they figure out which wire to pull, which reverses the polarity of the neutron flow, or something. They get barfed up alongside a few cars, and Devil shrinks down to normal. Devil uses his tail to squat Abomination into a building, and it looks like all is forgiven. The Hulks and Devil get ready to leave aboard their jet, as Spider-Man says his goodbyes to A-Bomb and his reptilian pet. Rick mentions that there was a legend of a spirit of vengeance that resides in Death Valley. Suddenly, Ghost Rider crashes the agents of Smash's prison transport in Death Valley to target Abomination. Ghost Rider uses his penance stare on Abomination which burns the Gamma out of him and regresses him back to Emil Blonsky. Then he targets Red Hulk for Thunderbolt Ross' role in the creation of Hulk, which leads to Ghost Rider dragging Red Hulk to another dimension on a military train that he took control of with the agents of Smash in pursuit. When Red Hulk finally repents the fact that he should have had a failsafe place on the Gamma Bomb that created the Hulk, 
Ghost Rider spares Red Hulk as they get close to a creature that would have disposed of Red Hulk. The agents of Smash and Ghost Rider evaded the creature and made it back to Death Valley. When A-Bomb invites Ghost Rider back to Visa Verde with them, Ghost Rider states that there is still some evil in the world. Ghost Rider then summons his motorcycle and rides off. A Kree armada led by the Supreme Intelligence is invading in retaliation for Ronan the Accuser's incarceration. With the Kree free Ronan the Accuser and leader, Hulk is torn between his two teams the Agents of Smash and the Avengers where both groups fight to prevent the Kree from destroying Earth. Ronan the Accuser and leader, they are brought before the Supreme Intelligence where he absorbs leader's knowledge. During the fight between the Kree, the Avengers, and the Agents of Smash, the Supreme Intelligence begins to absorb the knowledge of everyone on Earth. Hulk throws himself in front of the knowledge absorption device where he gets absorbed into the Supreme Intelligence as a result of this. Now the Avengers and the Smashers have to deal with a raging Supreme Intelligence, but they are unable to keep the Hulk contained and he savagely attacks our heroes. In a desperate attempt to save the Hulk, A-Bomb enters the mind of the Supreme Intelligence, while the assembled Avengers and Smashers attack from outside. It should be remembered that before his Gamma transformation, A-Bomb was Rick Jones' sidekick to both the Hulk and Captain America, alternate identity to Captain Marvel, and an honorary Avenger. The boy has been around. During the classic Kree slash Skrull War, Rick encountered the Supreme Intelligence under similar circumstances, and he created an army of Golden Age superheroes from his youth to stop the Kree. Hulk goes into battle against Ronan personally with Captain America's shield. As the Supreme Intelligence takes matters into his own hands, the Smashers call upon Earth's other heroes for help. Spider-Man, Ghost Rider, Doctor Strange, the Inhuman, the Guardians of the Galaxy, Hercules, the Howling Commandos, Devil Dinosaur, and the Monsters of Monster Island are all there to join the fight. Not Golden Age heroes, but still good. If you have made this far, you deserve to know the truth behind the show's immense critique. While people enjoyed that Hulk wasn't just a mindless brute, they stated that they spent the entire time making fun of the show. It was a little campy, and it's definitely made for children, which they were not. They wanted something which was more geared towards adults, despite the kid from the appearance. Moreover, the characters were called pretty one-dimensional as they had very little development. Anyhow, let's just say that at the end of the day, this show was not made for adults. So that will be it from us. If you enjoyed the video, let us know which season is your favorite. Also, do not forget to leave us a like and subscribe to our channel for similar content. Thanks for watching. We'll see you at the next one.